Hi guys, so welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Robin. Um, in today's video, I'm gonna I've got mocks coming up basically exams, so I have a lot of revision I need to do. So I need to be really productive and just kind of slay the day. But um, I thought I could also pop in a few of my main like study tips in the video like throughout as we go along, just because I know that finding what works for you can be really difficult and like how your brain works best at processing information and like remembering stuff but um i have a few like general bits of advice that i thought might be helpful for people um which i find really work for me like i actually started some of these not so long ago and i can already see my grades going up so something must be working for me here um some of them are quite common but some of them i haven't really heard of before so I'm just going to sprinkle those throughout the video in between keeping productive, um, staying busy and we can just hang out together. Um, I'm a little bit ill, as you can, you might be able to hear in my voice, I've got a bit of a cough, but I think sometimes when you're ill it's quite good because it forces you to like stay home, chill out and just, you know, stay cosy. So I'm just going to kind of hunker down, get going. Um, so yeah, I'm so glad that you're here with me to hang out. So first up, I need to do my flashcards, just kind of going over content and stuff a bit for like half an hour or something. But this actually links very well to my first study tip. So for ages and ages, I made paper flashcards like this. Question on one side, answer on the back. But I find that these, they're really, he like, they're really heavy to carry around. They take ages to make. And also once I made them, I just was never looking at them again. They just sit like in my desk and I would just never, never go through them. Maybe like just before exams to like go over content, but honestly they were just getting left. So I recently started using Anki, which is an online flashcard server thing, which is actually designed for like medicine and law students, I think. But what it does, it does spaced repetition for you, where so you'll do like one flashcard one day and then four days later it will come up come up again. So this means that you're always going over all your content in like a really good space that way, like it does it for you through the algorithm, which I'm finding is really good. It's a bit tedious going through like transferring these ones to online ones. But once I put them all on there, then I'm, I'm good to go. I mean, I also haven't made physical flashcards for all my topics, so that's fine. I can just make them straight onto my Anki, which is super cool. And I think it'll be much quicker than writing them all out. But yeah, that would be my first tip. Go to online flashcards. So much easier. Just honestly, so much better in every way because you're not lugging around loads of flashcards and you're not just leaving them in a drawer to gather dust. Like you're actually going over the content all the time which is so important for gaining long-term memory, which we need to remember all this content. So that's my first tip, online flashcards. And also when it comes to making flashcards, I do have a few other tips. So first off, use your spec to make your flashcards because your spec basically outlines everything that you need to know. So you are not gonna get, any, you're not gonna have any redundancy because it's all from your spec so you know that you need to know it. Also, it means you're not going to miss things out because, I mean, sometimes like in class or in homework, we just run out of time, so things get missed out. So if you use your spec, you're not going to miss anything out and you're going to be so much better prepared for your exams because you know what you need to know, basically. So that'd be my first tip for making flashcards. Second, I like to do colour coding. I can do this on, I can do this on my online ones as well, but I do blue for titles, pink for the question and then purple for the answer. I don't know the science behind this, but for some reason this helps my brain. All of my notes are colour coordinated, you might have seen in my last videos, but they're all colour coordinated, like I have a different colour for titles and like sometimes some keywords and stuff. And I find this really just helps me pick out the key stuff that I need to know. So that's my next tip for making flashcards. Um, and then also I keep them grouped together with bulldog clips if I'm using physical ones or I leave, make them into specific categories on my online ones because I find this just helps me keep a bit more organised 
which makes me happy. So now that I've gone through my tips for flashcards, I need to actually do mine so I can actually show you what my Anki looks like and run you through it if anybody's feeling inspired and wants to give it a go. Um, it is a bit of a pain to set up but once you get into it I feel like it's suddenly it's like so much easier it really makes sense. So let's get into it. So this is my Anki on my laptop. Um, as you can see these are all my different topics grouped into subcategories just to keep things organised as I was saying. Um, so and then this is your new cards to learn. So there's a maximum of how many you can learn each day. So basically it's a maximum of how much content gets introduced to you each day. So mine's at 20. I mean you could make this a bit higher if you wanted to get through more content more quickly. But in order to keep it manageable from day to day, I've just kept it as 20. So I don't have too many cards to do each day. And then learn, this comes up more when you're work in progress through the deck. So when you're kind of, when you've when you've been introduced to the new card and then you're going through the process of learning it. And then due, this is my ones to review. So I have 12 cards to review in Biology Core Concepts today. So that's fine. Um, and it will total up, if you put it into subcategories like these, then it totals them up. So I have 10 and 2 here, which makes for 12 in total in biology core concepts. This is because I haven't put the um, content in for these three. I've just made the deck so that they're ready for when I want to transfer content in. But that's how that works. And then you can also get extra add-ins where it kind of tracks your progress and then you get streaks and stuff. And then if we go into the deck, you go for study now, and then basically you just work through them. So now that I've shown you what's in my Anki, I'm just going to get started. I'm just going to spend some time running through my cards that are due today. So I just finished doing my flashcards. I actually spent a good like 50 minutes on it, but honestly, you don't have to spend that long on it. You know, it's just, I have the time today, so I thought I'd just take it slow. Um, so now I've got to move on to doing some revision notes. So I've got to go over all three of my subjects today, but we're going to start with, I think we're going to start with biology, but I haven't started any of my biology notes yet because I was just doing my flashcards. But now I want to just make revision notes as well. Normally I'd do revision notes first and then transfer to flashcards. So I'm going to start doing that for biology as well now. Because I just feel like just writing stuff out really gets it into my head really nicely. So when it comes to revision notes, um, I'd recommend using these spiral bound notebooks. Because it means that all your work, you can just flick through it really easily and it can all be in order... If I mean like if you've got loads of loose paper you can do it in like folders and stuff. But I'd say keeping your revision notes organised is so useful when it comes to going over stuff. And to be honest, I did quite a lot of my notes on paper first, so then I've just tied them in. Which works just fine. Like I can this means that um I can still like flick through them and everything. So it's fine. Um if you miss stuff out, use post-it notes to add stuff in, it's fine. It all looks nice in the end. Um and yeah, as I mentioned, I colour code things with my highlighters. So I do blue for titles, purple for subtitles, pink for questions, orange for geography. I use orange to do case studies or examples. And then yellow is just general important stuff. So I find that can be really good and they look really nice and it's all good fun. And then for doing my revision notes, I'll use a combination of class notes revision guides and like study guides and then exam specs again so I don't miss anything out so I kind of flick between the three I generally find once I've looked at the exam spec I can go to the revision guide and my notes and cross-reference and then I can get everything down that I need to get down and I just 
Again, I find this is the best way to avoid redundancy and to make sure I'm covering everything that I need to. So that's how I do revision notes. I mean, I think we've kind of been through this before, but no harm in doing it again. So I'm just going to start my biology notes and do that for a bit. And I also just want to say that whilst it's nice to make study notes look pretty, you know, it's not worth spending all your time doing that because at the end of the day, they need to be useful to you. But I do find that colour coding and using highlighters is one pretty, like, quick and efficient way to make them look nice. So I just wanted to say that quickly. Whilst I'm working on these notes, I thought I'd drop in another one of my study tips. So my third tip is to have a study playlist that you always listen to when you're studying. So this is like the chill music that you can have on in the background that's not going to distract you. I'd play it now, but obviously copyright. But um, so you have a playlist that you always listen to when you're studying, because I find this can really help you get in the zone. So don't add music to it that you listen to anyway. Don't put on all your favourite songs because that's going to really distract you and also you'll be listening to those other times. So you need like the specific songs that you wouldn't normally listen to any other time but they can be in your study playlist. Like you like them but they're not on your main playlist. It's hard to explain but like I think making the slight divide so only having songs in there, I mean like having a majority of songs in there that you wouldn't listen to at any other time other than studying can really help get in the zone so I've actually I haven't been doing this for that long but I'm finding it really nice because like when I put my playlist on it's like I know that I'm getting ready to do my work I'm like getting in the zone and it just helps bring me like into the headspace so I've got a study playlist, you can use that one if you want, it's public, it's on my Spotify, I can link it below in the description, um, which I use alongside a few others just in case I get a bit bored, but um, yeah, I find this is really a helpful one because I really like having the background noise, but I if I'm playing like, if I'm playing Taylor Swift whilst I'm working, I'm going to start singing along and then I'm not going to be taking in any of the stuff that I'm doing, you know? So I think it's really good to do this, to just create a divide, it will help you get in the zone more easily and it just like, it's just like part of setting up your space for when you're doing your work. So my third tip is to make a study playlist and only listen to it when you're studying. So I finished doing my first page of notes and I thought I'd just show you guys. So this is what I've done so far. So I'm actually, I know I just told you all my colour scheme and that is my normal colour scheme with my highlighters. But for biology, I'm using neon highlighters because I got given them for Christmas. So it's fine. It's fine. Just roll with me. So I have my title here and then my subheading and then my bullet points and then my bullet points. Sorry, my another subheading, diagrams, I've underlined keyword, key ideas in yellow. I didn't want to completely highlight because it's a very bright yellow. But yeah, that's what I've done so far, so I'm just going to keep doing that for a while, to be honest. I decided to have a little lunch break and have a snack. Just sit in the sun for a bit with my dog. You can see Pebble <laughs> coming around in a minute. Um, it's just so important to rest whilst you're studying as well, just to make sure you don't burn yourself out. So I was just chilling out here.
Hi guys, so I just got back. I popped in to tell my mum to run a few errands. So it's about half four now. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more work, but not a crazy amount because I'm quite tired and also I'm a bit ill, if you can't hear. I've got Lemsip next to me. I'm like downing that bad boy. But um, yeah, so I don't want to like overwork myself. Plus it's the weekend. So you know, you've got to get a bit of rest in. But um... I'm just going to move on and do some philosophy notes and then hopefully I'm going to do a little bit of geography. Um, yeah, just see how I go really. Um, but that's all that's left on my list, which leads me into my next study tip for you all. So, to-do lists. These bad boys are so helpful. Everyone should make to-do lists. I don't know if I'm just like an organisational freak. But having a nice list and being able to tick everything off makes me happy. And um, I find that like delegating tasks to different days means I don't get overwhelmed with my workload. And it just keeps everything easy breezy because you don't have to do loads of work all in one day. And like cram it in at the end of the week. So I used to use paper planners. Uh, so like this, so it's just got the weekdays and then, yeah, it's just got all the weekdays in and the dates of the year. So this is like an academic one, so it runs from September to August, but you can get different types. So, so I used to use that kind, find that, I found that good, get my pens out on a Sunday night and just write everything in, sort out when I was going to do and everything, and that was all good, but um, I recently switched over to an online version on Notion, just so, I don't know, just because when I got my laptop I figured I may as well put it all in one place. But either really works great, honestly. Um, I don't tend to put timings on my to-do list, like do biology homework between 10 and 11, because I kept, whenever I did that, I found that I'd just get behind and then I'd get more stressed and I'd get more and more behind as the day went on and things took a bit longer than I thought. So I don't personally do it, but I have friends who find that really useful and it helps them avoid like procrastinating. So I think you can really go either way on that one, you just have to see which one suits you more. But generally I'd say planning out when you're going to do things is so helpful and makes you feel so much better and less overwhelmed. And it just makes sure you get everything done. Um, so yeah, I would really recommend that. So yeah, next study tip. Make to-do lists, use a planner, delegate tasks for different days to keep your life simple and organised. So I'm just going to get on with my philosophy now and do a bit of epistemology. Ooh, so exciting. It's not even in my mock. I'm actually so silly, but it's fine. I'm going to do it anyway. So because it's a bit later in the day and I'm getting a bit more tired, I'm going to use Pomodoro timer whilst I'm doing my philosophy just to keep my retention snappy. So I'm going to do that. You can get really nice ones online, like cute little ones. I'll show you mine that I'm using today. It's literally, I just googled online Pomodoro time. It's so simple, but it's so sweet. And you brown and make it all aesthetic. Yes, this is what we need, guys. Okay, I'm actually gonna stop playing around with timers and get started. <laughs>
So I just finished my first Pomodoro timer. I had a few technical issues, but we overcome, we overcame those. And I just finished my first 20 minutes. So I thought I would take the time to tell you my last study tip. And it's one of my favorite ones. And it's not actually one that I've really like seen anywhere else. Um, so yeah, this is like pretty slow. Um, so I found back in like September, November, I felt like I was spending all of my time working and just getting nothing done. Like I'd spend the whole day working, but I'd only have finished like one thing. Um, and so I was a bit confused like th by this and I felt like I didn't have any time to do anything else, like any time to relax or anything, so I was just working loads and loads and loads. Um, and then I kind of, someone pointed out to me, mm, we were spending all this time working, but like, how much time are you actually spending on your work? So I started timing how long I was actually working for, so not the time where I was just sat at my desk doing nothing, or like, just getting set up, the time I was actually like, pen to paper, doing what I needed to do. And then I'd lap it if I needed a break, which is also really important for studying. Everyone knows this, you need breaks in between. Um, but I'd lap it when I had a break, and then I'd start it again when I was going back to what I was doing. And I actually realised that even though I thought I'd been spending all this time working, actually I'd been spending a lot of that time procrastinating and not doing anything. So now I... No, most of the time actually now I'll time myself as I'm doing my work and I find it's a really good way to keep me accountable and just make sure that I'm actually like using my time efficiently because we don't have that much time we're all so busy so I think the time you do put into like your studying it needs to be effective and efficient so that it doesn't like take over your entire life which I know it can really feel like so this is a big recommendation from me, time your work as you do it. So I, I, I use my timer on my phone, just my stopwatch, or you can get like swanky ones online. This has been my one for today. So I've done two and a half hours and then down here these are my laps and then I can resume it. You can set like stuff. So you can make it all aesthetic again, I know, um, but honestly I found this has really helped me just to use my time effectively and get done what I need to get done, because as I said earlier I don't like a lot of times to do pieces of work because I feel like I just get behind, but I do do this because I can then, at the end of my like day, I can look at how long I actually spent doing it. So it's just, I don't know, it just really helps me like keep in touch with my workload and how long it's been, how long I'm spending doing it. And also it's quite good because you feel quite pleased at the end of the day when it's like, oh, you've done two and a half hours of work, good job. Um, and also you can set goals. So previously I've managed to get it up to like six hours. <laughs> Which is obviously insane. I'm not saying everyone should be doing that. That was when I had like loads of deadlines and I had to get it all done. But I mean, for setting like revision goals, I think it can be a nice way to do it instead of focusing on like content to do, instead of focusing on how long you're going to do it for. Maybe, but then you have to be a bit careful you don't just spend time procrastinating. So that's the thing. I never have it going when I'm just doodling about or having a break or whatever it's only when I'm doing my actual work so that's my final study tip for you all so we've had quite a few but yeah I don't see this one many places so I'd really recommend timing as you go and holding yourself accountable and being the slay girl boss that you are so yeah that's that's that <laughs> so i'm just gonna maybe do another timer or two maybe if i'm feeling super super girl boss but i'm just gonna go ahead and do that um but thank you so much for hanging out with me i've loved having you here 
I feel like we always spend, we always end up spending like the morning till it's dark together. It's really, it's really nice. It's really sweet. Um, but thank you for watching. I hope this was maybe helpful for you because I know finding study methods can be so difficult and like, I feel like it's hard to know how you learn best because I mean, at school we just do it in like so few ways. Like, how are you going to know if you like mind mapping if all your teacher ever tells you to do is bullet points, you know? So just play around, have fun with it, stay productive, be a girl boss queen, and um, thank you for watching. Um, do check out my other stuff on my channel. I'm hoping to post more music soon, but I know. But hopefully that will go, and I can film some more stuff to put on there. But I also have a few other study videos if you need a bit more inspiration or even just company as you're starting your work. But thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon.